Silence! Our job is to see to it that Hackman is put out of commission. Oh boy, General Disray, maybe we just ought to stay out of this one. Wow, well, it has been a while since I made a South Park video. You could say it's been a chaotic time without one. Ah, oh, well. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Butters Stutch. Now, Butters is best known on South Park for getting tortured and ridiculed by the other characters, especially Cartman. But what you might not know is Butters isn't a doormat, usually. Sometimes he rebels back whenever he feels like it, and one of the ways he does is via his often used persona, Professor Chaos. Now, Professor Chaos is cool and everything, and I love seeing all those random cosplayers as him. Honestly, he's probably like the easiest character in the whole show to do. But the problem is, Professor Chaos is, in many ways, just that. Butters cosplaying. Not saying this is a writing flaw, it's a character flaw. And character flaws typically aren't bad, because they give your character and your show more depth. After all, Poe Buddy Nerfect in fiction or in real life. Professor Mr. Chaos should be this outlet for Butters to unleash his stress, his long withheld anger, especially against the people he resents and the people who bully him. But in many ways, he's hampered by being Butters. Honestly, I don't want to say it like this, but Butters would be such a great antagonist if he wasn't such a giant <laughs> So let's discuss. But first, a little background. I'm sure by now you're familiar with Butters and season six as a whole, but I like to approach these videos with the idea, this is your first time watching me, so sorry if I repeat stuff. After Kenny passed away in season 5's penultimate episode, Butters became the new fourth friend of the group. However, the lingering grief of Kenny's demise still remained with the boys, and so they took their sadness out on Butters. And unlike Kenny, Butters had a more submissive personality, which meant they could get away with a lot more. Whenever he fought back, he would be compared to Kenny in the worst way. Oh, you don't want to get potentially dangerous and fatal liposuction surgery? I know Kenny would have done it. And then I got in double dutch for having liposuction, and now you're asking me to be in triple dutch? Uh-uh, I'll never be that dutch. You guys remember what a cool friend Kenny was? Heck, he did do all of that Johnny Knoxville stuff. I'm sure he probably would. The final nail in the coffin comes from the new Terrence and Philip movie trailer, where Butters won't let the boys go to his house to see the trailer, despite the fact they spend all episode trying to find a place to watch it, even going out of their way to break into various houses. Why? And my parents are out of town. Oh, God damn it! you better be kidding. No, I really don't have a babysitter. Really, Butters? Really? This whole time your TV is in a house with nobody in it? Come on, let's just go. We'll kill Butters later. Professor Chaos deals with Butters repenting for his sins. The boys invite Butters over to Cartman's house in order to break the harsh truth to him. His services as a friend are no longer needed. Who wants to tell him? I'll do it. Hey, fellas! I'm glad you called me. There was a pie-eating contest down at the firehouse, and I thought we should all go. Now you tell him. That actually sounds like a great episode idea, not gonna lie. Why did they never do this? I mean, they did do a whole episode about veal, but they still go ahead and tell him that he's no longer their friend. I like how they do it like he's getting fired because he was late to work one too many times or he didn't turn in his TPS reports. Not working out? I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go as our friend. You're just too... Lame. Lame, yes. But I can get better. No, sweetheart, that's not true. You're also a nerd, a geek, a creep, and a baby. Butters is obviously disappointed they quit on him without warning. Like Kyle's kidneys in that one episode. I thought we were really having fun together. Yes, well, we weren't. Please, fellas, don't fire me. We're sorry, Butters. Our mind is made up. Then again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Terrence and Philip thing played a part. Like, to them, he got multiple chances. If anything, he got about three strikes. One, he failed at liposuction. Two, he failed at the freak thing. Even though that's technically not his fault, they don't give a crap. And finally, he failed at the trailer. Oh, and he annoyed Cartman with the veal, but that's more on Cartman's end, so... I think the only thing he didn't quote-unquote fail at was taking taking them to Aspen, but that was more so a problem with their parents and the timeshare people. Heck, even Butters points it all out. I do everything people ask me to. I stand in the lunch lines for them, I buy tampons at the store for them, I go on Mori Pope for them. 
I didn't plan that, it just happened. So Butter takes rejection the same way I do, going home and plotting murder against the person who robbed me. But he does it Butter style. And yet nobody accepts me, I am an outcast. A shadow of a man who can find no companionship, no love from others. Fine! If I'm to be an outcast, so be it. Okay, this actually feels kind of tragic. Like, it kind of makes you wonder if Butters knows deep down that nobody likes him. Or maybe they do, but they're all weirded out by him. I actually feel a little bad that the only time he was able to find true friendship was as Margarine, aka somebody he wasn't. And the fact he probably can't find that same friendship again because he was a boy, disguised as a girl. Really? Maybe the speech and going naked? didn't seem so out of place. Maybe it really was a long time coming. All of this leads to Butters fashioning a costume out of aluminum foil. Oof, hope that he don't have to make any tater tots or pizza bagels. But seriously, they really need to do a cosplay episode or a con episode, or even a furry episode. I can feel them making the point that furries aren't like losers living in somebody's basement. They're basically anybody who's willing to pay for a really expensive hobby. And he gives birth to Professor Chaos. A prepare for the greatest supervillain you've ever seen, Professor Chaos! Butter, it's time for bed! Okay, Mom. Okay, I want to contrast this with another episode. In The Ungroundable, which came out a couple of seasons later, Butters thought he became a vampire, when really he just drank Clamato juice, put on some fangs, and bought some stuff at Hot Topic. In that episode, he actually did rebel because he thought he would have no limits, since vampires can do what they want as far as he knows. I try to help and all I ever do is get hollered at. I'll bet vampires never get hollered at. Vampires just get to do whatever they want. But he only really rebels against his parents because they were unfairly grounding him. But you're gonna... Ah! Butters! <sighs> I am going to my room now. For I'm a slumber, Poussin. Heck, when it comes to Cartman, I guess he technically tries to, but then he gets cold feet like a second later. And as Cartman says, Well, Mom, apparently Butters is gay, finds me very attractive, and confused about his identity puked up all over my floor. Ew, gross. Actually, that's kind of creepy when you really think about it. Here, while he does rebel, kind of, he rebels against the wrong targets. Instead of getting mad at his friends for abandoning him, he rebels against the world as a whole. Or say in going native, instead of getting mad at Cartman for how he's treated, because Cartman is the main bully, he makes fun of Scott Malkinson for having diabetes. Kyle even calls him out on it. People can't just go around beating up people who have diabetes. Now whatever your problem is, you just... You just think you know everything, don't you, Cap? Every little thing, you gotta shoot your mouth off like you're the freaking expert! I feel like Butters has a lot of emotions, but he has a problem when it comes to getting even with people. I feel like if Butters puts his energy into it, he can do well. But he has a problem with projecting that energy and having the wrong focus. Like how he does away with the Hallies. He really should be mad at his friends or be mad at the native Hawaiians for how they're acting, but Instead, he just gets mad at the random Taurus. Stupid, greedy, Hallies, kill them all! Here, well, let's see. Butters does try to cause chaos, but the problem is, well, honestly, Butters doesn't really know what chaos is. His first attempt is switching the soups at Bennigan's, not like putting a spider in the soup or poisoning them or laxatives or something like that, or just taking the soups for himself, literally just switching them. Uh, waitress, I actually ordered the chicken soup. This is minestrone. Yeah, I have the minestrone over here. <laughs> wow, how evil. Let's see his next attempt. I bet he'll do better. Has anybody seen the eraser for the chalkboard? <laughs> Brains can take it no longer. No? Oh, oh, well, never mind. I've got a backup one in the desk. You can do better. I'm sure of it. Who are you? I am Professor Chaos. For the hour of chaos, there is a hand. <laughs> hey, that kid took my last eraser! You know, I'm surprised she didn't know it was him, just 
saying? Or did she just play along? Eh, probably the first one that doesn't really seem in character. No, I'm not opposed to this style of chaos. Honestly, if I ever wrote a villain, I would probably do this because honestly, I feel like small petty crap adding up over time can be really annoying and kind of worse in a way than just like losing everything at once. An annoyance can lead to frustration, which leads to further difficulty. And honestly, it sucks when you get like physical symptoms of stress. But again, Butters, you could do better. Like, I'm sure of it. Some horrible new supervillain made somebody get the wrong soup order at Bennigan's. No, I didn't hear about that. It's the liberal media. They're keeping the stories of my deeds covered up so as not to cause a panic. No, sweetie, no. Not that, no. The news has better crap to report on. I'm sorry. Like, I know you live in a small town, but I'm sure they can find something better. Somehow, Butters is discovered by another person. Strangely, I have no clue how or why. So... Someone has discovered my horrible secret. This could be a trap set by the FBI. Oh, I'll be at the docks, precious FBI. So he ends up going to the docks and discovers it's... Hey, Butters. Oh, hey, Dougie. Uh, I mean, my name is Professor Chaos. I saw you change in the school bathroom. You stole that eraser in your class. Oh, yeah, Dougie. I forgot about him. Let me explain. In the earlier seasons, Butters would sometimes hang out with Dougie, a.k.a. a Melvin or one of the weird kids, like in the hot tub episode. Well, mostly a side character, he did appear earlier in this episode when the boys were screening new candidates to replace Butters. Somehow Stan included him, even though he was just a boring Melvin. Did he give him a second chance because he was friends with Butters? or he be easily manipulated, or did Stan just forget he existed? I have no idea. But he soon got eliminated. Oh god, I didn't make the cut! I didn't even get a chance to have them get to know me! Dougie, likely because of what happened, says he wants to get revenge with Butters too, as his sidekick, General Disarray. Do I get a Nito costume made out of aluminum foil too? Well, sure you do! I am Professor, and you shall be my general. From now on, you are General Disarray. General Disarray. Yeah, no offense, those roles should be reversed. General seems more powerful than Professor. But yeah, I can kind of get why Dougie wants to team up with Butters here, considering how he got eliminated and all. I'm an outcast too, a frail child cast aside by society. I want to follow you and whatever you're doing. Very well. That's pretty, like sad, a good villain backstory. Honestly, and I don't mean it as an affront to the episode, but what if the pair gathered all of the kids that Kyle, Stan, and Cartman eliminated as part of some revenge scheme? Like, oh, you threw us all away? Now we're gonna cause the world chaos. Eh, I'm spitballing here. I'll move on. Dougie makes a much better minion to Butters than random hamsters. Oh yeah, he also had hamsters. I should have clarified. Go now, my minions. Go and take this a foolish mortal down. Oh, minions, not, not that way. Yeah, come back, minions! Anyhow, Stan, Kyle, and Cartman are going with the final crop of recruits to a sports game. Yeah, I could never be your friend, I hate sports. Where they are interrupted by General Disarray and Professor Chaos. Professor Chaos says they are going to flood the world, Noah's Ark style, by basically using a gardening hose and running up his parents' water bill. A reign of terror is complete! The turmoil has now come full circle! Hey, it's the host for full general disarray. Oh, how evil. Well, I mean, honestly, that kind of is. As an adult, that's, like, evil to me. Of course, this doesn't work, but I feel like this was a weirdly missed opportunity. The boys, aka Butter's old friends, and the, re and the reasons he's pushing himself into villainy are watching it, and they don't even react. They're not like, eh, Butters is doing something stupid again. This is boring. You want to go home or something? So, like, it just feels kind of weird. Like, I get they don't care, but you'd expect at least one comment. So, Butters tries one final tactic. We are going to tear down the Earth's precious atmosphere. My latest plan will melt the polar ice caps. Say goodbye to your precious ozone and hello to chaos. Butters, I hate to break it to you, but Black Villain from American Dead did what you you did 10 million times better. And he actually succeeded. And then Stan furthered his plot and killed basically half of the United States. All because Black Villain wanted a beachfront house. In like Detroit, I think? In the next episode, Butters goes to talk to the boys and their new rebound bro, Tweak. Oh, hey Butters. How are things going with your new best friend? Well, Tweak's okay, but he's certainly no Kenny. Ah! Yeah, but he's still better than you, Butters. Yeah. Well, uh, that's good. It's true. I hate to say it, but it kind of is. Really, Tweak was the perfect substitute. True, Tweak could be annoying to the boys, but he did what Butters was supposed to do 
like 10 million times better. Like alert them at the corner or hold Spielberg and Lucas at gunpoint. I think the only bad thing he did was get kidnapped. And even then it was kind of like blaming Butters for Aspen not working out. And honestly, to Space credit, he survived this whole season unscathed, I hate to say. The only reason he left wasn't because he was fired. It was because honestly, there really was no reason. I just assume he wasn't fired like Butters because it never came up and Tweek always had those anxiety problems, so maybe he was like, uh, this is too much pressure, I'm gonna go. Anyhow, Butters and Dougie have started to craft more potential plans, but I feel like at this point, it's less Butters trying to get revenge on people in the world that hurt him, and more like two kids playing supervillain, which I'm fine with either way, I'm just saying. Butters' newest plan is to use a dome to block out the sun, but as Dougie points out, <laughs> Oh, it'll be just like on The Simpsons. Huh? They did that on The Simpsons. I think it was the Mr. Burns character. He tried to block Springfield from the sun. So you did? Okay, funny story. This episode was based on something that happened with the writers. And unlike Butters and the Mummy, it actually feels like an inside joke that we the viewer are in on. When they were writing the episode where the kids just say their parents touch them so that they could have the whole town to themselves and the whole town goes to pots, well, they were going to have Cartman black out the sun. I have no clue why, I just... I don't know. Only to discover that the Simpsons already did it. When who shot Mr. Burns? Because Mr. Burns was going to do it to keep nuclear power and his business afloat. And it was also one of the events that led to the townsfolk possibly killing him. But you guys all watched those episodes, you don't know what happened. Trey Parker was frustrated that that and pretty much all of his other ideas up to that point were quote unquote stolen by the Simpsons. Or I guess a better phrase is pre-stolen, as in they thought about it first. And you know how much it sucks when somebody thinks about something first, especially when you're on a show like South Park? Now, I eventually want to make a video about South Park and how they talk about writing. But for now, I do like what this episode does with Butter as Professor Chaos when he's basically a stand-in for Trey Parker. And honestly, again, I'm sorry if I keep comparing the two, he's a much better standout than The Mummy. Like, The Mummy just felt like... Like, I know I was making fun of Trey's divorce, but like, it was not funny. See, Butters keeps trying to find an original plan, but the thing is, he wants it to be original. And The Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. I'm gonna start a website to spread vicious rumors about everyone in town. And then, and then I'll take the Simpsons did it. I'll bury a skeleton wearing angel wings so that the townspeople with his bones. Simpsons did it. Part of me wonders if he was watching those episodes and just subconsciously remembered it being a good idea. I've done it before. Like, I remember for years I did the Clinton thing. And then it wasn't until like two years ago I realized I was doing it because I watched that one Treehouse of Horror where they take over Bob Dole and Bill Clinton. I was like, wait, did I do it all this time because I watched that episode I forgot about? It's one reason I haven't really watched as many video essays on the show I review recently since I don't want to accidentally steal ideas and forget to credit the person or ruin my thought process. But I will support the creators in other ways like reposting their videos or leaving a like or something like that or watching other videos they've done on shows I don't review like King of the Hill or at least don't review full time. Again, like King of the Hill. Now, I'm sure you're saying that Butters could just do it. Who cares if The Simpsons did it? Maybe it's just anxiety gnawing at him like a chain chomp on chocolate. Since when you're a writer, you're your own worst critic. And to be fair, he does try that. And he just constantly gets compared to The Simpsons. This act, of course, reminded us all of the time that Bart Simpson took the head. Why didn't you tell me The Simpsons already did that? You seem so proud, I didn't want to bum you out. Stupid Simpsons. Honestly, once you relate this to South Park, I feel like there's more merit. South Park is a show all about satiring, so while any other show you'd probably be like, oh yeah, didn't The Simpsons do that? And then just move on, because you could like write it off as a quick little reference. Well, with Cell Perk, it's a show built on making fun of pop culture and real world events. So if they had an episode of Cartman blocking out the sun, everybody could be like, oh my God, they're making fun of that Simpsons episode, aren't they? Oh yeah, that's a joke about that Simpsons episode, isn't it? Even if that wasn't the point. And honestly, as a writer, I kind of get that frustration, even if I am kind of big on Death of the Offer. With a show, I guess there's more leeway to imagine 
scene and dream, but for me, it does suck when I feel like people don't get my intentions. Me personally, I don't care. I just take it as a sign I need to explain my points better next time. Anyhow, because I feel like I'm ranting, is it no wonder that Butters decides to simply give up? Fine! Then maybe I'll just forget about destroying the town and just run away and join the circus. Simpsons did it. Also, fairly odd parents too, Butters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I heard the new revival's pretty good. Butters eventually binge watches The Simpsons. I've watched all 132 episodes of The Simpsons twice. Yeah, sorry, sweetie, they have like seven times that now. Actually, when I checked Wikipedia at the time of writing this video, it was 738. Butters decides that he'll make a device to remove the insides of cherries and replace them with old mayo. Eh, I don't even like cherries, so this wouldn't affect me. Or he could also just kill the Simpsons and grind them up into chili and feed them to Matt Groening. But then again, he'd also be making fun of the Simpsons, so six of one. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen this on The Simpsons, right? No, I think The Simpsons would be more clever than that. Good! Eh, I could see them doing that, honestly. But I also feel like they would try to relate it to a real-life event or pop culture phenomenon that's over-explained and five years too late. No offense, I don't mind modern Simpsons a lot of the time, but I feel like at the worst, they kind of feel like South Park, but written by your out-of-touch liberal great-uncle who wants to get in good with them kids and their grams. Like, did they really need to get rid of a poo? Or that episode with Michael Jackson? Eh, those are South Park videos I should make. Tonight on The Simpsons, it's a laparama when Bart builds a machine that takes the cherries out of chocolate covered cherries and replaces it instead with mayonnaise. See? Is it no wonder Butters ends up having a full on mental meltdown and seeing everything in the Simpsons style? Simpsons did it! No! No! Simpsons did it! Simpsons did it! Don't have a cow, man! Oh, sweetie Jesus! No, speaking from experience, the key to stopping panic is to remove yourself from that situation if you're able, even if it's just running into a bathroom and sitting on a stall for a couple of minutes. Too bad Ducky didn't get the memo. No! Wow, and I thought Melhouse was annoying. Butters eventually learns that the boys created life using sea people, and the actual stuff that sounds like that one guy from the Super Best Friends. And he realizes, oh crap, this is just The Simpsons with a new coat of paint. Treehouse of Horror, episode 402, the Genesis Cup. Lisa loses a tooth, and the bacteria on it starts to grow, and makes a little society, and they build a statue of her thinking she's got. Oh yeah, I like that episode. Wait, isn't that the one with Bob Dole and Bill Clinton? I did not plan that. That was all ad-libbed. But to a shock, nobody cares. So? Yeah, so? Did The Simpsons have done everything already. Who cares? Yeah, they've been on the air for like 13 years, of course they've done everything. Which, I don't know if this was just the show staff hoping nobody would care, or if they realized, like, oh crap, even if we do make fun of The Simpsons, nobody's gonna care. And that sets him straight. Because unfortunately, well, how do I put this? Well, ideas are kind of like male reproductive organs. There is no such thing as an original idea anymore. But it's what you do with the idea that sets you apart. Every idea has been done, Butters, even before The Simpsons. In fact, that episode was a ripoff of a Twilight Zone episode. So I shouldn't care if I come up with an idea when The Simpsons already did it. And that's a really good message. There is no such thing as originality. And yeah, you might be compared, and who cares? I mean, I get compared to people all the time. Sometimes I take it as a compliment, usually. How dare you compare- no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Again, it's so weird. Nobody ever says anything. Like, seriously, they're not even like, why is he wearing aluminum foil or what the hell was he doing? Doing. They just let Butters go home. Anyhow, Butters sort of retired Professor Chaos outside of the occasional cameo. I think Good Times with Weapons is Butters doing everything he does in these past two episodes, but with the violence ramped up. Ugh, that means I gotta censor it. The boys are playing ninjas, meaning they are playing with real weapons, and of course, they won't let Butters play. Wow, wee! Hey, can I play ninjas with you? No, Butters, we are a very select elite fighting team sent to protect the world from evil, and you can't play with us. Yeah, Butters, you wouldn't make a very good ninja. Come on, guys. Because this is before they have to protect Kenny's house from the homeless. So Butters dons his Professor Chaos persona once again to destroy his enemies. I'm a lost soul, a dark, lonely shadow of a person. Hi, Butters. Hi, Mom. The 
castaway, forced to live his life out in solitude. Even if Professor Chaos is not a ninja or associated with ninjas, but I guess that fits in with the aesthetic. And I like how he plays along at home. The boys are just pretending outside and he gets all up in it. Well, could you be a sweetie and take that pie over there to the Thompsons? This time around, they're fine with Butters playing, as they finally have an arch enemy. At least until they throw a star at his eye. And rather than getting a wish, well, Butters is lucky he's not going into shock. Or losing that eye. Or outright dying. We need to stay calm and just do the right thing. We have to kill Butters and bury him in Kyle's backyard. Dude, shut up! I agree with Cartman! What?! You don't understand what my mom will do to me if she finds out I was playing with weapons! Poor kid, good thing he's a cartoon or he'd be mauled for life. He'd be looking like Aim and Tar Targaryen. Instead, they just dress him up like a dog and take him to the vet. Like, poor kid! Like, the vet was gonna euthanize him. But fellas, if I, if I dress up like a dog with a star in my eye, I'm gonna get grounded! Shut, Shut up, buddies! That is the dumbest idea you guys have ever come up with! I'd expect the stupidity out of Carbon. And the boys tell some other kid, and the other kids just treat it like they broke a lamp. But at least they did away with Professor Chaos, that is what is most important here. The coon also has Butters reestablish his persona once again. Kind of. Carpin has created his own superhero persona of the coon. Which off topic, but I've always wondered if he picked the name the coon because raccoon is a slur in certain contexts. Carpin is obviously a horrible superhero. Like, I think he actually maced a perfectly healthy couple. Jesus Christ, can we get a lock on that window? Look, kid, you need to stop. He's gone. No, I'm just over here now. And as a result, everybody gravitates over to Mysterion, who actually does Cartman's job very well and looks nothing like Bruce Valanche, whoever that is, I really have no clue. Just wears his underwear over his pants! Now come on, which one of you guys is it? How are you so sure Mysterion is a boy? <gasps> Carbon can't stand it, so he ends up consulting Butters, this time as Professor Chaos, on how to deal with him. And I like the implication they've had countless fights off screen. I need information. Oh, I'm sure you do. But you see, I. But you see, I also know you like to beat me up. Maybe this is why we never saw the kids reacting to Butters and Dougie. They just harassed them when the credits rolled. Like, when this happened. Hey, what's wrong with the Jumbo Chan? People of Earth, your meaningless lives are about to end! Carbon is probably like, ugh, I'll go beat on him, don't worry. Butters invites Carbon to his secret lair and shows him some exceptional, devilish hospitality. Can I offer you a Coke or a Sprite or something? I'll take a Sprite. Well, get the Coon a Sprite, General Disarray. Would you believe me if I told you that's how I got into drinking Sprite? Thank you, Butters. Thank you. Carbon tells Butters to threaten Mysterion into confessing his true identity. If Mysterion does not unmask himself publicly by Wednesday night, I am going to blow up a hospital. Blow up a hospital? Dude, you know Cartman, he would do it. Besides, Peter Griffin did it, so it's fine. Oh, and Cartman fully intends to carry out this threat. <laughs> we aren't actually gonna bl blow up anything, are we? If you don't make good on your threats, Chaos, then what good are your threats? I mean, aren't you a good guy? Sometimes blowing up hospitals is for the I don't know how, and I don't think he carries it out, but as Dougie points out... If we're really evil villains, then we should betray him and blow him up with the hospital. Yeah, he's got a point, kid. You're villains. You're supposed to hold your plans as close to your chest as a shepherd does to his sheep. Is it really no wonder that when Mysterion shows up, Butters just confesses? Well, oh, hamburgers! Ah! Ah! I'm a Mysterion! Why are you doing this? This isn't your usual M.O., Chaos. While well, Professor Chaos does make the occasional cameo once again, and he's well known, well, we do kind of get one final episode starring him. And I think it explains pretty well why we haven't gotten another Professor Chaos episode since. Franchise prequel focuses on Coon and friends as they attempt to establish a franchise, which is totally not based on the MCU and the mess that was the DCEU before James Gunn. Although mostly the MCU considering the Civil War comment. I thought Civil War wasn't supposed to happen until Phase 3. Shut up, Super Craig!
Every franchise needs a good overarching antagonist who hopefully isn't played by Robert Downey Jr. What sense does that make? So they have Butters, and he needs to be the best villain so they can get a show with Netflix, which will then get cancelled after one season because it's not an instant success, but it's promoted as two seasons for union purposes even if that's not how it happened. But rather than engage in actual villain activities like blowing up hospitals or robbing banks, well, Butters does something unfortunately all too realistic. He spreads vicious rumors about Kuhn and friends on Facebook. Really? Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram seem more appropriate. Craig tells them about the rumors. We have a big problem. What is it, Super Craig? Somebody's messing with our Facebook page. They're spreading all these lies and saying we like burn the American flag. Well, Carpen does it a couple of episodes from then because he assumes all black people do it when they get angry. What time do you guys usually go out and disrespect the flag and stuff? Oh no. Don't tell me you guys already disrespected the flag and flipped over cards today. Did I miss it? What the hell are you talking about? I told you not to let him in. But the Supreme Court also withheld it, so it's fine. The boys tell Butters to stop what he's doing, and he refuses. You can't just make stuff up about us. Look, fellas, you have a right to be on Facebook, and I have a right to be on Facebook. And sometimes that's gonna cause a little... chaos. Ah, that was clever. What I like is how even if Butters is doing something terrible and evil, and honestly one of my worst fears, like getting doxxed or something like that, well, he's a pretty chill boss. He's even trying to get insurance for all of his employees. I'm sorry if I'm gushing, but one of my favorite tropes is when a villain is a villain, but they have that one positive trait, like they'll give everybody the day off or a pizza party or something like that. Makes them feel a bit more realistic and fun characters. Characters. Butters obviously can't afford bots, somehow I have no clue how bots work, so he hires a bunch of kids to act as his minions. Everyone, can I have your attention please? We have a new agent of chaos. Please welcome Adam Bork. Oh, his wish is a proper minions who aren't hamsters has finally been fulfilled. Wait, where's Dougie? Butters explains. Oh, you look fantastic, doing nothing more than what Facebook was designed to do. I make money from Facebook for my fake content in order to pay Facebook to promote my fake stories. Which, no offense, Butters, you should have done more realistic crap like that. You wouldn't gotten more respect and fear and traction as a villain. Butters is able to get away with its actions because it's technically legal. It's the 21st century, gentlemen. There's nothing illegal about what I'm doing. Yeah, no offense, I think it's borderline illegal because you're spreading slander and misinformation against Kuhn and friends and you intend to profit off of it. Honestly, they could probably sue you if they wanted to. Plus, you outright admitted. Good thing he asked Mark Zuckerberg to do the knee thing like Deadpool says. Besides, you can't do anything to me. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Mark Zuckerberg like, is in this episode and I kind of like him. The town tries to summon Mark Zuckerberg for help with everything happening on Facebook, but he behaves more like a rejected anime character mixed in with a strict JoJo instructor than a savior. And he just annoys the town with his crazy antics. Like he does this to Token's parents when he shows up. Zuckerberg ate everything in our freezer and then helped himself to my wife's lubricant. Why has this lived rent free in my head for years? I have no clue why. But one point, and then I'll continue on, I'm surprised they haven't done any other episodes on social media ever since, especially since there was a whole leak about how algorithms on places like Instagram basically manipulate you into having poor self-image and insecurity just to get you to keep scrolling. Wait, is that why they keep recommending me all of those videos of Disney influencers like, haha, we can afford a 10 grand vacation? Or people frosting cookies? or Reddit stories, making me question my own skills as an artist, or my fear that one of my Reddit stories will end up on a random reel and not on BuzzFeed. But how did Butters earn Mark Zuckerberg's patronage? Why are you protecting him? He paid me $17.23. It's the Facebook safeguard program. Just $17 monthly gets you personal protection from Mark Zuckerberg. Huh, I should do that. Sucks them I'm professionally active on Facebook. I wonder if there is an Instagram version. However, Coon and Friends uses this tactic against Mark Zuckerberg and Butters, because why scrap together money to defeat Mark Zuckerberg? By making it seem like Mark Zuckerberg was beating up on defenseless kids who were simply trying to raise awareness on sensitive topics, while also being minorities and or marginalized groups. Ever heard of Facebook? 
Facebook Live. But but hold on, that that's not true. Facebook says it's true. That is smart, though. The video is exposed, and Mark Zuckerberg, well, he's out of town. And Butters' company is shut down for good. Oh, but the, but the health insurance plan. But don't worry, he doesn't just lose his company, he loses everything. All thanks to Steve and Chris. Curse you, Kuna friends. This isn't over. Oh, yes, it is. Butters! You're the one who started all this? Uh-oh. <laughs> That is smart too. And because Russian bots gave him the idea, well, he forces Butters to go with him to Russia, back when you could still go to Russia, and get Vladimir Putin to confess. If Mark Zuckerberg points a loaded cannon in someone's face, are you innocent for just lighting the fuse? Answer me! Yet. And once he confesses, he gets grounded too. I hope you're both very satisfied with the damage you've caused, because you're both grounded! Yeah, he probably should have been included in Back to the Cold War. I don't hate that episode, but some parts of it did feel a teeny tiny bit lacking. But this episode is also the first time Butters got in actual trouble for being Professor Chaos. The Coon trilogy doesn't count. Again, that was just them playing pretend at that point. And neither does Butterballs, nor the star in his eye. By in trouble, I mean like by his parents or like legal action. Like imagine like, Butters, you tried to blow up a hospital? Well, you're grounded for two weeks. I think that's part of why we haven't seen Professor Chaos ever since. He got grounded for it. Like, Butters doesn't care about consequences. Well, I mean, he kind of does. But he cares about them more if his parents aren't parting it. Because they're that strict. And the lesson finally sinks in. Or maybe... <gasps> Linda washed Butters' costume on the delicate setting when it's supposed to be hand wash only. Linda, spray a bottle with vodka and water. Also, if you do cosplay, do that. It's really smart. That happened in my Fizzarelli costume and I was so angry. Either interpretation works, but I do like Professor Chaos. This was a fun video to analyze. Like, I spent months trying to write this. We all lash out at the world in our own ways. I, for one, make YouTube videos. Or if you want, take Butter his example and become a supervillain or a vigilante. Whichever works for you. Anyhow, uh, bye.